You know, the crazy thing is, is that there were also American and Danish companies that worked alongside with the Nazis as well. The thing is, is that when people say the Nazis were socialist, I find that to be the most idiotic argument ever made. <laughs> the Nazis used corporations in order to assist them to achieve their fascist goals. I know I've covered this in the past, but this is complete nonsense. Yes, the National Socialists were in fact socialists. First, let's talk about support from foreign businessmen. Just because you're a businessman does not mean you are pro-capitalism. You can have a business and be a socialist or a communist. And this guy has pro-Bolshevik and Lenin stuff on his page, but he doesn't realize that they were actually supported by foreign interests, just like he claims the Nazis were. Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution documents this well. What about businesses in Germany? German Big Business and the Rise of H-Word is a book that came out in the 80s written by Henry Ashby Turner, who was a Yale history professor. This book completely refutes the claim that capitalists supported the rise of the National Socialists. In fact, it was actually the opposite. Hitler and his accomplishments set out to neutralize the business community politically in order to keep Germany's capitalists from obstructing the Nazis' grasp for power. The firms and organizations that engage regularly in large-scale political funding, they continued to support the opposition of the National Socialists until Hitler was actually appointed chancellor. In John Toland's biography of Hitler, he points out another great quote by Turner. The financial subsidies from industry were overwhelmingly directed against the National Socialists. He also points out how they focused on workers' rights and improving working conditions, and they incorporated wage and price controls. Gunter Reimann, who wrote The Vampire Economy, was a communist economist who lived under the National Socialists. In his book, he documents the anti-capitalism of the National Socialists, and he obviously didn't come at this from a pro-capitalist perspective. He has an entire chapter about the destruction of the sanctity of private property. How can being actively against private property be capitalism? The owner of property was helpless since under fascism there's no longer an independent jurisdiction that protects the property rights of private citizens. They got rid of Article 153 of the Weimar Constitution which guaranteed private property. Capitalism is private property and the voluntary exchange of private property. So yeah, this is anti-capitalism. He points out how some businessmen even started studying Marxist theories so they would have a better understanding of the present economic system. Numerous clashes between private enterprise and the state occurred as a result of price restrictions, which represents the state's most far-reaching attempt to control private economy. No, they weren't hyper-capitalists. Capitalism has nothing to do with government intervention. Because what fundamentally matters is who do the mean of productions belong to? Does it belong to the workers directly or indirectly? Or does it belong to a few private owners? How can it belong to the private owners if the private owners don't actually have a say? If the state comes to me and says, oh, you have to produce a certain thing, you can't choose what to produce. You have to produce our stuff for war so we can go kill people. You also have to remember Marxist socialism is not the only type of socialism. Read a history book. It's important to understand that fascism is a tool used by capitalists in times where the average person gets too much democracy and threatens the capitalists. Wow, that was the worst music I've ever heard in my entire life. It feels like a cheese grater was rubbed on my brain. I've talked about the subject in a few recent videos, which you should check out, but I figured I'd expand on it a little bit more. There's two subjects I didn't really touch on before. One is where do these communists get these claims? Like, where does this come from? This whole fascism and capitalism are the same thing. Where, where does it come from? And two is a little bit more deeper on Italian fascism because formerly I mostly talked about Germany. So in this guy's video, he gives <laughs> citations. They come from the book Black Shirts and Reds by Michael Parenti. So a bit of history behind this book, which is supposed to be a work of history. Michael Parenti specifically set out to wrote this book to debunk the people who associated Nazism and fascism with communism. That's not how you should do historical work. You don't set your mind on something and set out specifically to find confirmation that your idea is correct. But the thing is, Michael couldn't find enough stuff to confirm his hypothesis, so he just made stuff up. Most citations in this book are either non-existent or really bad. He talks about the Soviet economy, yet how many times does he cite Alec Novi, the leading expert on the Soviet economy? Zero times. Zero. He talks about German big business, but how many times does he cite Henry Ashby Turner? Zero. How many times does he cite Andrew Sutton? Zero. How many times does he cite Gunter Reimann? Zero. He actually cites himself more than he cites the experts on the topic. This particular page in the book has no citations. Yeah, the Nazis were funded directly by businesses. Source? I made it up. Came to me in a dream. 
Let me prove to you how dishonest this guy is. He has an entire chapter defending Stalin's crimes. He claims that the numbers for how many people died in famine in the Soviet Union came from Winston Churchill. He claims Winston Churchill got this number because Stalin raised both of his hands like this. And so Winston Churchill's like, oh, it's 10 million. Parenti says it was a hand gesture that may have signified an unwillingness to approach the subject. He's like, oh no, Stalin was just like this. You know, he wasn't actually meaning 10 million. So he gives a citation for this down at the bottom, which goes to this book. And then this book has a citation, which is Winston Churchill's book. But if you go to Winston Churchill's book, he says specifically that Stalin said millions and held up his hands. So that proves that Michael Parenti just makes stuff up and lies. And this is where communists get their history. Now a quick touch on Italian fascism. This is a fantastic article you should check out. The fascist economy was actually based on the Soviet Union, the one that this guy wears on his shirt. The Italian state took over bankrupt corporations, seized the stock holding of banks, nationalized heavy industry, mandated unions. Italy saw the highest rate of state-owned enterprise in the world outside of the Soviet Union. 